Francois Rabath was born in Syria in 1931 and lived in Paris, where he played and composed his own unique virtuosic music, while also collaborating with popular artists like Ornette Coleman, Jacques Brel, and Michel Legrand. In 1978, after Francois's historic debut in Carnegie Hall, Frank Proto and I invited Francois to come to our International Summer Bass School in Cincinnati. Frank, inspired by Francois's amazing musicianship and unbelievable technique, wrote many concertos and solo pieces for Francois, including this popular Carmen fantasy that you are currently hearing. Francois was eager to share his unique music and technique to the American audience and returned to America every year for summer courses. Barry and George Vance established the Rabath Institute both in Washington, D.C. and Cincinnati, and later in California, Hawaii, and Canada. Paul Ellison was the first bassist to study with Francois in his Paris home, followed by Barry and a host of famous bass players from the jazz and classical world, including Hal Robinson, Hans Sturm, Patrick Nair, Nicholas Walker, Renaud Garcia Fons, Ray Brown, Rufus Reed, John Clayton, and endless professionals from around the globe. Rabath has published his new method in five volumes of technique books and two major DVDs. His technique was beyond comprehensive. Imagine a well-known traditional bass method by Samandel offered just one fingering and bowing for a two octave scale. Paul Ellison helped Rabath with his comprehensive third volume of his method and that offered 133 fingerings combined with 282 bowings for the same scale. Wow. I think Raboth is playing notes faster than the ear and the brain could possibly comprehend. Hold on. I believe he's just getting warmed up. This is really insane. <laughs> After we recover from that cadenza, let's take a look inside Rabat's technique of the pivot and the crab. The pivot, it's so important that it, you reach three notes, not anymore two, even more. I, I just move my hand like this. Here also, it's smaller and it's bigger. It's, it's, uh, you reach note, not just to make it more easy, but in, in pitch, because the security are this. I don't move it. I can reach and come back. I don't move it. This is the movement. It, it, it's that. Traditionally, when we play alternating scales, we slide. For example, we slide to the node to change position. To avoid shifting, this technique allowed me to do I assure one note, I place the next. In other words, never slide to reach a note. Left the preceding one, place it and then left while still playing this note, and so on. 
Hans Sturm has published two amazing DVDs employing multiple angle views of Raboth's bowing and left hand, plus biomechanical images showing the internal movements of the fingers and arms. Hans explains the filming of this project. We have uh, live performances on there. We have interviews where he talks about all kinds of things, uh, nervousness, uh, how to teach, a lot of different aspects. We have the biomechanics animations, we have the lecture, and then we have the lecture demonstrations with the multiple camera angles. And it's, it's a very kind of complete way. You, you can look at his seven families of bow strokes. You can switch, so looking at him from front on as if you're watching a player in a recital. You can uh, look very closely at his bow arm from the front. You can look at his bow arm uh, from the back of the bow arm to see what the hand is doing. And then we got a cherry picker and we had a guy up looking over his shoulder down at his bow arm so you can get a sort of a perspective of what does it look like from the player's perspective as well. the two hands to equalize At the 1988 ISB convention in Los Angeles, I heard Francois play this amazing piece called Ritba. It was inspired from his African journey through a hot desert. This music represents the heat waves above the hot desert sand. Soon, a lake in the distance looks like a mirage. And Barry, this is actually the lake called Reitba. At first, Francois Raboth thought that the lake looked like it was surrounded by snow. But we can see it is actually a great salt lake, and those are all salt deposits. Another one of Francois's compositions is called Grease. That's truly a remarkable bull hand. favorite evocative pieces inspired by the Iberian Peninsula, performed by the gifted young bassist Dominic Wagner. Dominic was the most recent winner of the International Bratitich Competition. Pushadas employs a punticello technique, allowing the bass to sound like an Indian sitar. The piece was inspired by Ravi Shankar and brilliantly played here by Volkan Orhan. It's one of Raboth's signature pieces that usually opens his live concerts. Its form is a traditional Indian raga that just builds with exciting energy. So much of Francois's music is inspired by nature and his travels. 
After visiting Venice, Francois was outraged that the city officials had the technology to stop the flooding of one of the world's most unique and beautiful cities, and they couldn't agree on the solution. Francois shows another side of his artistry with electric bassist Steve Bailey and the music of Duke Ellington. Thank you, Francois and Steve. Thank you, Barry.